Hello and welcome back to Stories Untold. This is episode four, the last session, and this will be the last episode. Let's get started. I think that's enough of that for now. Fond of the show, aren't you? Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. All right, let's go to the observation room. We were watching. It looks like we might have been watching. Feel like home to you. Stories untold. Don't worry. I'll try and get you out of here eventually. Just in here. Okay. Are we through in the next room? Just relax. And we'll get started in a moment. All right. All right, Mr. Asian, how are you ready? Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. This is subject 12198623. New session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander, leading, and in a room we have our patient, Mr. Alexander. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two week coma following his accident. In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready, bring this back. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this. James, it's time to remember. It's time to remember. Question is what? Your mind. It's like a conscious black box. It can show you your memories. Look into The machines aren't just a weird machine we're connected with, they are our memories. In your most recent episode, you recalled a false memory of a remote weather station. You were isolated from the rest of the world, locked inside your coma. We interacted with you daily, encouraging you to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you anything really to bring you back people need an answer james Jay do you remember Easier. i have another signal here for you james it's at five six one zero fm you can't miss it five six one zero fm probably turn it on <laughs> Leading us through the things we've gone through pre in previous interviews, we've had episodes. Starting with the most recent. Type in the numbers, James. Guess he did. This is 20F, 12, 19, 86. Report. Type in the 
Brown versus James. Got the, this is 20 F 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers, James. Got C. This is 20 F 12. No, I see. 19, a traffic accident vehicle they talked about even the 20f fatal accident we saw the blinkers saw the cars in the snow control empty whiskey Empty whiskey out of control. Type in the numbers, James. Got C. This is twenty F twelve nineteen eighty six. Don't know if the first one will be right. Type in the numbers, James. Got C. There we go. Capitals matter. Searching. Officer Williams interview. Finally. Audio archive reporting officer. 7000 FM. Light flickers on. This doesn't make sense to you. You step out of the hospital ward, but it only seems but only it seems abandoned in your vision is blurry. I think. With that said. All of your episodes are recorded on tape. This is the fourth. Tense up. Someone else is here. You got the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. Day room. You spent most waking moments in here. No puzzles. Stories untold. Churro user. Die safe. Did open. He only caught a glimpse of the room. You guess that's why there is no detail here. The waiting area is dark. We feel a presence right behind you. Someone breathes on your neck, standing over you. 
You feel dread in the pit of your stomach. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to 10 and give me 100 joules. Come on, 100 joules. Charge amp full. Which one does joules? <laughs> ah, this... Screen, please. Catch the camera on. There you go. Clear. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. Two hundred joules. Keep the amp charge at ten. Two hundred. Two hundred joules. Keep the charge at ten. Let's go. Clear. Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. 360, charge full. Come on, 360, hurry. Clear. You know, turning a dial is a lot easier than... Looking and dragging. <laughs> if you look at that, seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an X-ray right away. Where are we with that X-ray? Let's get it going now, please. <sighs> Looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Switch on a drill, please. The drill, please. I did turn it on. There you go. Had to turn other things off or switch to the camera. You made excellent progress. You're doing great. We need you to stay calm and try to relax while we go through the next steps. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. Oh. I can only imagine how awful that would be. Like, now that you're back and awake. Back to the house abandoned. Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you'll leave on a six-month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad, and your sister, Jennifer, have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends of Mom and Dad. There is a door to the hall. Push through the crowd and into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever. Only this time, the folks have put up a great big banner up across the main wall. Half-finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Check out my banner. Bon voyage, James. Finally not in the family disappointment. Yeah. Nice. Okay, well. And then, like the living room, we're in the hallway. Let's check out the kitchen. See, all the best parties are in the kitchen. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table. The party is in full swing. 
Cat has cooked a hog roast, which sits proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. Take a look around. There's a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is here signaling you. You push through, apologizing over and over. Get to Jennifer. You hug. You're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you are enjoying the party. Sure. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway, and to loosen up. She asks you to, you to get her a drink. You pour Jen a drink, and one for yourself, too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Say yes. Where did you go? You tell her yes. You have packed and everything with plenty of room. Another hug. Your family have really gone out, really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective, and maybe not fuck up so much. She's going to miss you. You are going to miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared in the crowd, and you're left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There is so much to do before this move. Can't mess it up. But first, a drink. Pouring down another drink. Anything to move the night along. Round again. Room is full. There's a utility room and writing on the wall. Get writing. Look at wall. You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys, ceiling to floor racks, collector. Although he does actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. You pick up the whiskey on the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've, you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really. You have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you take in the room about you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds of worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Well, let's go find him. Clutch your new best friend and head back into the kitchen. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. This is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give the thumbs up to your dad across the room. He nods and winks. Okay, so we've done that. Yeah, let's get out of the kitchen. Go back out to the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through, and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. What is this about? She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. What is going on? Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. What happened? So sorry, I don't understand. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I don't understand. That's the face we saw it earlier. Sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best mobilization, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I'm so sorry. So is she. Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Zation, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. 
I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. I need something bad. You were standing in the hallway. Something had stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. Jen? Yeah, yeah, we can talk in the car. Go get your keys. Uh, well, where are they at? Let me go to live. Maybe they're there. It's not good. You're sure your keys are in the living room. The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are all sat on chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. Doubt look around. Coffee table, a drinks cabinet, one of the chairs is overflowing with jackets and coats. Go see mom. No, ah, she doesn't want to let me. Okay. Go to. Friends and conversation. Yeah, look at chair. Friends and conversation. Jackets and coats everywhere. Look at drinks cabinet. Your mom's collection of wines and spirits. Definitely no keys in here. Things on coasters, like proper civilized people. You can't see your keys. Look at coat. You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Our keys in the pocket. You grab both. in hand you head back into the hall jen thanks you for helping her out she has work in the morning and no one else is in any fit state to drive well i'm not either you can handle it though you know the road like the back of your hand don't you you open the front door and walk out into the freezing night the cold air hits you you are glad you have your jacket with you there's a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch the yard extends around the back of the house and the car sits at the front of the house. She sighs and comically taps her feet. Apart from the little light escaping from the party indoors and the yard is pitch black, you used to love stargazing here. You stumble around the darkness looking for the perfect spot to take in the majesty of the night sky. I thought it was I thought it wanted me to go to the yard before I went to the car, but I'll just go to car. Not. Okay, Jennifer looks relieved as you head back around to the front of the house. Okay. Yeah, this is weird. Now we get a car. I definitely want to like find more text adventures. You fumble with the car handle, confused. Until Jen tells you you maybe use the key in your hand. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get to the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car glove box and hands you the note and the key that was inside. She tells you this for when you return. Rad note. 
the note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. We'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power and lights on. Also, found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. Car is freezing. It's time to go. Unfortunately. <laughs> Use key. Takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. You turn the key in the ignition and the car roars to life. Car squeals but stays stationary. Jen suggests releasing the brake, giving you a wide eyed stare. Yeah, I was like, they add a lot of little mundane stuff to like in, in, in initiate. It's like, this is a big thing going on here. You very hesitantly release the handbrake. You put the car in gear and pull out on the driveway like the first time. Like a first time driver, you really shouldn't be driving. You, I am driving, very drunk, on the road, towards the town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. It shouldn't take long. Come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. Sorry, I don't understand. Turn, run, turn left. We'll try that. You don't want to, but you had better just ask in Jen for directions. Ask Jen. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. You turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you are on the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. And I normally would. That's not what really happened, though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling you, crazy sister. Strange. There's a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow, like slow motion. You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights emerge with your car. The outside joins the inside. The world around you begins to scream. And that's what happened. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity, trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes spill out your car from the engines. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of here. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you slump onto the roof of the car. She's alive, but she has been hurt bad. She's trapped in the wreckage. You can't do anything for her right now. You need to help yourself now. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall on your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. The blue car has smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You are standing and holding your whiskey and your dad's note. Flashing lights are approaching at a distance. The hazard lights are blinking and fumes are rising from the engine. Through the smashed windows you can see the motionless driver. The door is jammed. You don't have time for messing around. You're messing around like this, James. It's an older man, body slumped and his face is bloody.
Well, that's not smart thinking, James, is it? Well, he'll eventually find it here and we'll link it to you. Can't just toss this away without thinking, hey, we'll find it and put it back to you. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the shrill of their, uh, the shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. Clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then very deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people, all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Silhouette is a police officer and in uniform. He beckons you to approach. As you approach the man, the man, the pulsating lights around your car dimmer, get dimmer and dimmer. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident, that poor man, me. You have to remember. It was all your fault. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and you wrecked all of our lives. And then you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. Say it. Tell them. Listen to yourself. It has to end, James. Do you not understand? This episode you're having must come to an end. I think we've made progress today, Mr. Haitian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. Nothing to be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your chauffeur. I'll see you tomorrow. That is Stories Untold, report episodic game that, I mean, just the way it ends, and the more you play it, like, you see all these little things, like the light flashing from the little thing, it's like the, it's the police lights, you see, you know, just all these little things, and, you know, it's like, okay, the experiments you're doing, it's all mirroring the them trying to resuscitate you, and, like, everything you went through, and dealing with it everything all the pain you caused and in the gut reaction how and it's not even just that but like how you reacted to it you're like i would try to try to help your sister the game won't let you it's like but that's not really how it happened was it i was like no it wasn't very intense very very good i'm a huge fan of this game so 
I streamed it. It didn't go well because <laughs> I had way over had everything set up. I kept turning the stream off on all of the uh, all the parts with the uh, the codes. So I just knew I needed to make episodes of it and just get it out there to be able to watch. So like I say watching is great, yeah, you know, but like I think it it adds some to it. Um, just going through it, it's a great experience. So good job, Devolver Digital, No Code Studios, everyone involved. It's it's so good. I was blown away by this game. Like, and that you have to, you like, you know what's happening. You don't want to make a different choice, but it's like, no, this is what happened. You know, you're not playing the game. You're not making the choice. You were trying. Your character is trying to remember it. But that's the last session. All four episodes. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you with whatever's next. Goodbye.